this is a butterfly tutorial number five in combination with ladybug so what is actually the advantage of using a cfd tool within grasshopper well compared with other standalone software you can actually use the data not just for analyzing the wind but you can combine it with other data and that's where the real power comes in that's where it becomes really interesting as you remember a few weeks a few months ago i did this video on uh, outdoor comfort in with the latest uh, ladybug tools there you also have an option to put wind speeds or at least at that time we used so we used the wind from the weather station at that particular spot and used it as a factor calculated with the um like a multiplier where you use either let's say it's a city center is an open field is it an open seaside that you had the factor and you had the wind speed and that was basically calculated over the whole site over all the probe points because what ladybug does you also have the pro points they, they're called a bit different they're called different than in butterfly but they're basically the same and that's what we're gonna look into the second thing in the next video then we will run the whole thing on a big model because that's another question came up is so is um butterfly only for like simple models no it's open form is a full-fetched cfd modeling tool nevertheless cfd analysis is very uh, time consuming depending on what depending on what you use or depending on how accurate you want the outcome to be because for example ansys is a, a, a real-time cfd analysis tool but but then it becomes also less accurate and you can actually see that in the in the analysis so there are different ways to do cfd cfd analysis and open form is one of more is more like a the, the classic way to do but also quite accurate in any case we will have a look and we will check how how uh calculation intense a bigger model is and we'll see if we can do that in this video or maybe in another video first let's try to combine the outdoor comfort model which i did back then with the the latest cfd model uh the, the cfd script okay so first we need a model of course so uh, i'll go back to this one it's a bit smaller we can maybe try a bigger one later Um just just checking if these are all closed 81 closed solid solid poly surfaces yes that's great and we need um our our butterfly wind tunnel okay which that was in manhattan okay let's go here copy link to clipboard and Let's place this in here. Takes a while. Okay. Wind rolls. Okay, that's also good. Strongest winds from the south, or the most most of the time the wind comes from the south. That's very good because we haven't figured out yet how you can rotate the tunnel, the wind tunnel. We was always rotating the model, which is perfectly fine. But yeah, in that in that case, perfect. So we don't need to rotate anything. And we will turn off everything here. Need to be careful that I don't cover. Maybe let's go here. Maybe let's do this. Maybe this is better. Okay. And we will also need our outdoor comfort, uh, our ladybug model, the outdoor comfort script. Oh. Okay. Let's do it like this. Okay. Uh, I loaded this it actually turned right into uh, the analysis we had previously. Yes, so uh, I need to take this whole thing. Let's, um, I want to test something very quickly. Okay, so, hmm. by the way, I, I tried some of these stuff here, the refinement levels, I didn't play with that, but I tried to play with the, um, the refinement region and it doesn't change anything. I, I really don't know what it does. It's a bit pity that it's not better um, explained. Uh, the landscape we should set to seven. Let's. This is the chaotic city center with mixture of low rise and high rise buildings. So that we could set to seven, so it's more accurate, more to the um, the actual situation. Uh, yeah, you can also set it here actually if you want. It's also uh, set the data item. It's also possible, but it's also good to see it and you can change it here. Um, then we're gonna create the block mesh and that will take a while. So we can actually create the cells. Yeah, it took a bit, 
just a few minutes, two or three minutes. Um, then we create the hex mesh, snappy hex mesh. Okay, that took quite a long time to calculate. Um, so to calculate the hex mesh, snappy hex mesh, um, it took uh, about let's say half an hour for this for this model. But yeah, there's a, I mean there's a lot of geometry already, um, and of course I could have chosen a smaller spot. But uh, yeah, we wanted to check that anyway. So let's go into top view and let's run our solver, the solution. Um, I hope I have. I don't want to run it again because took quite a while so let's let's run this and then hopefully it crashed okay so I reopened this one but I, I will I will not use this model for now I will just um, test it on a smaller portion so I will create a very simple um, tool first and then we can see what the issue is with the larger model maybe there's some problem with the geometry or so I'll just do this, something like that, that should be fine, maybe that f let's kill this here. Uh, and I also combined the weather, the, um, the windrows with the auto comfort, so, so we have the same weather data and we don't have tools twice, except for this we have actually, so I could wind speed, wind direction, wind speed, wind direction here, and we can also delete this one. So that should be all fine. And this we're gonna use this geometry here, and then we're gonna use these as our model. That should hopefully be very quick. That looks fine. Yeah. So this will continue to run, but we can already figure out how we can use these this data now in our um, outdoor comfort script. So we have the wind velocity here, and here's written data collection or individual or individual of airspeed values in meter per second. The default is a low speed of 0.5 meter per second, which is the lowest input speed that is recommended for the UTCI model. So we could actually then take these and I would say, okay, I'm just very bold and just place it in here. I mean, at the end, nothing can really go wrong. This is calculating the background and we're using these numbers here and plug it into here. Let's see, I hope, I hope that works. Of course, we would need to check is is this the wind speed on that day, as it if or in that hour? So we have six o'clock in the morning um, on the on one of the hottest days. We can of course choose something else if you want. This is still running. That's good. Um, let's choose probably one of the most hottest times, one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and okay, let's run this. Okay, that ran. Now we need to run this one. Very excited. Very excited. Don't know yet why it's not running on the big model. Hmm. Okay, that ran already. So now we have 736 out, um, values going into here. And then this should also have 736 values, yes, going into here. And oh, yeah, we need to run this as well. Oh wow, that was quick. Let's let's wait until the uh, the wind analysis has finished because now it's updating all the time. But it seems like it works without any bigger issue. Hmm. So that was actually finished. So now what we could do, um, because it's a bit, well, let's change the the time of the day because it's so we have a bit more um, difference a bit more shadow maybe um, and that will give us a bit of a different output let's go here to 
six six o'clock in the morning it didn't really change much and that's i guess because because the wind it's actually slowing down and that's why it becomes hotter there's not enough enough ventilation so yeah it, actually the wind has a lot of influence on because you can see actually that where the wind is faster it cools down okay 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 i had to tweak a bit here um so it's actually it's really interesting how, how much the the wind influences the outdoor comfort i i wouldn't i wouldn't expect that i wouldn't have expected that but in a way it makes sense it means also that where there's more less wind on these hot days or the wind is cool, is, is uh slowing down it actually creates more heat in these areas although at the moment you can see that um <clears throat> And I, t and I tweaked a bit and I will show exactly what I did. Um, you can see that between this area here and here, it's only one degree difference. But yeah, it, ha it has an influence. Um, but I show you what I did first. I, I will show you quickly what I did with the um, output here. I wanted to get rid of these numbers and I wrote a very quick Python script, which does that for me. And don't worry, it's actually, it's very simple. Just follow me and you will understand how it works. So I, I wrote a small script. Uh, it's basically this. And what it does, it's basically a for loop. Um, I added a bit more, which is not needed. I added a new list, but that's actually not needed. What's important is this bit here. So I created a for loop, which is basically checking every number in the list. And if the number is bigger than my maximum, or like the threshold, the 2.427, then it replaces that number with the threshold number. Okay, I'll I, I show you what I mean by that. So I will just start a new one so you can follow me. Get this, the Python script here. Just type um, grasshopper, grasshopper Python script. This is this tool here. Double click, and then you can already script. And so what I need, I need the list. It's my list here. This is my uh, vector list. I don't want to sort it. It's very important because they need to be exactly in the right spot. Um, and I could actually replace these, but yeah, we get to that later. So I take this list and I plug it into X and then my maximum, is this one I plug into Y and by the way Ladybug is written in Python as well so that's why you can actually go into any of these tools here and the grasshopper script opens and you can actually read the code it's pretty impressive so we have the list of numbers and the maximum and I go in here and then I say for I for every number in X the list X I want to check if the number is bigger than my maximum. So I can do it with if i is larger than y, then print y. No, nothing happens yet. And very important, what you need to do here is you go here, you right click and you say, give this a list, you give the axis. So normally it's set to item axis, then you get a runtime error. So you need to go here and put it on list axis. And you can even give a hint what that is. And I would even put the float numbers here. So now Python knows whatever comes in is a list of, of float numbers. And the same here, it's an item. It's because it's just one number. But even here, I need, I should give it a float hint. So and the Python knows it's a float number. That's important. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And now you can already see it went through all the numbers and, and every number which was bigger than y was replaced with y itself. And now I can write else print i. And now my numbers are free of these weird big numbers. They're all replaced with my maximum. So that's one thing. And here, don't need to flatten this. Um, here, just a thread some a, a bit more fancy. Uh, it doesn't really change much. So here I just created a new empty list. 
and instead of printing it directly I said create a new list and append the Y instead of printing it and then in the elif I could it could either write else or elif it doesn't matter if you have a third condition then you can write else at the end um, but yeah it works doesn't matter and then at the end I just say for uh, J in the new list new speed list print all J does the same and then I have this as an output the list is then an output yet out you could also create a new name for that uh, list or data set and then that goes into the wind velocity and then the other thing what I want to show you is if you want to get the maximum value of of a list because that's there's actually no tool in in grasshopper which can do that so again you can for example what i did here i added a legend parameter legend the same what we did in here and in order to um, set the maximum to the maximum of the list what it would normally do is to set it would just take all the numbers in the list in the list and checks the, the minimum and maximum and Sometimes you want to control that. So it's either you want to set the maximum directly here or you just want to read it just so you know what the maximum is. Because if you compare different sets, then uh, you might want to have the maximum and the minimum always in the same on the same uh, value. So when you compare a color chart, then they all, the numbers always represent the right colors. Just think about it. You, you will get it. You can also get it here interesting um yeah i want to get these values here these are my uh utci the the auto comfort temperature and i can can plug them in here and again i need to set this as a list access and they're all float numbers so i would even then go here and set it, get it set it to float and at the moment there's no output and this is very simple you just need to write maximum this is just defining the name for a variable maximum is the maximum of x now there's no uh, there's nothing because I, I i didn't write print so let's check if i'm still here yes i'm still here so i didn't wrote print i could write print here print maximum and that would give me the maximum 31.9 but I don't need that let's also define the minimum minimum is min the minimum of x that's it and then now I just need to write here maximum and then here minimum I mean now it's anyway better you you see everything because I took out these weird numbers uh, it's actually quite nice anyway in any case you can uh, always check this here and then um, for example you want to compare the different different times of the day where the temperature is actually quite different for example you have uh, during lunchtime you have like here you have a range of 30 to 31 and in the and later in the afternoon you have actually let's say I don't know a range of 30 to 25 then you could then you could set your minimum Twenty-five, because if you want to compare the two, um, you don't want these maximum and minimum to adjust always to the range of the output. Now my temperatures are all within this range, but if I have a second image which has twenty-five somewhere, then I can actually compare the two. In any case. Um, we got rid of these numbers, these weird numbers, and now we can actually see that the wind speed has a really big influence on the auto comp. I just want to add something. Um, I actually forgot to uh, also change the 
context um, for the um, outdoor comfort study. So that's also important that we, we always use the same context and now it's much more accurate. The, buildings, the building shadow has some influence on the outdoor comfort, but at the same time, the wind now, adding the wind component actually changes changes the output quite dramatically. So if I would look now um, into the wind component here, this is my, so if if I would assume that my, that the wind is everywhere the same, then this would look like this, which is, yeah, it's quite different. So it actually tells me that around the building, because of the shadow, it's cooling down more. But in reality, if we add the wind factor or the wind component, then this changes the output quite dramatically. Well, dramatically. But yeah, it's heating up more where you actually have less wind. Uh, if we look now, if we would now choose an extreme cold week, let's let's try that. That would be um, January. Oh yeah, no, no, it worked. So, oh wow, that's changing it quite dramatically with the wind. So here, the lower wind actually has a positive influence. Let's try another daytime. Interesting. That's quite interesting output. So the shading here actually creates, has a lot of influence on the temperature, but then also the wind, the wind also adds. So we will continue, uh, we will try to use this script now on the big, on this big uh, model and also see how, how it will do with much more complicated shapes. Anyway, that's it. See you next time.